I'm Megan. And I'm Neil. We've packed up our home in Glasgow and moved into our cute retro camper van Harmony to travel all over Scotland exploring the best places to stand up paddle along the way. So come join our adventure as we visit the highlands, islands and everywhere in between on our Sup Safari Scotland! Finding we had a bit more time on our hands, we made our way up to Inverness to travel the North Coast 500. For the next few days, the weather was pretty cold, wet and windy, so chances for paddleboarding were slim. We did find a few great options for when the weather is better. Fortrose Bay and Rosemarkey Bay are a couple of nice sandy beaches which are worth checking out. They are divided by a small peninsula of sand, at the end of which is a narrow channel of water which you'll need to give a wide berth to due to potentially dangerous currents depending on the tide. bit the British seaside town from the old days. Travelling further north, we stop to visit Dunrobin Castle, a beautiful fairy tale building that looks like something out of a Disney movie. They had a falconry display which turned out to be pretty interesting. I wasn't too sure at first as birds in captivity doesn't sit right with me but it was interesting to learn that birds were used for hunting well before there were guns. Part of the display was exercising the birds as the hunting season hadn't yet started and they needed to stretch their wings, literally. We saw a falcon and a peregrine falcon which is the fastest creature on earth. They've been clocked at 240 miles per hour. This pretty cool old gate leads into the museum, which it turns out housed a lot of animal heads. This isn't really our cup of tea, so we decide to check out the house. Dunrobin Castle is a beautiful building and was owned by one of the richest families in Europe at the time. While appreciating the high level of skill involved in building the property, we were also made aware of the darker past this place is linked to. One of its owners, the first Duke of Sutherland, being notoriously linked to the harshest of the Highland clearances, which saw landowners removing tenants who had lived and worked on the land for generations, sometimes forcefully from their homes to make way for more profitable herds of sheep.
St Clair Bay is better known for its surf and is worth checking out if you're a sup surfer, although today is probably a bit on the wild side. We made it up to John O'Groats for the gratuitous selfie before heading west and finally getting away from the hammering wind. So this is done at Head Lighthouse at the northernmost point of the British mainland. Over the back there in all the grey clouds and mist you can see the very southern point of one of the Orkney Islands. Nearby Dunnet Bay looks like another great spot to check out if you're into your sup surfing with beautiful sandy beaches. Thurso is pretty famous for its surf beach, which probably doesn't look too great while the tide's out. Tongue had been on my supper list for quite some time and with stunning mountainous background like this you can certainly see why. If you paddle here you'll want to stay to the eastern part of the lock, away from the currents passing under the bridge.
Next on my supper list was a trip to the Rabbit Islands. We're at Talmine Bay at the moment. Had a overnight at Kaila Tung campsite because we heard on the weather report that it's going to be a better day for paddling today. So we want to paddle out over to the Rabbit Islands, just over the back here. So having a bit of a look at the waves, just going to sit, have a cup of tea and just uh, see what the water does over the next wee while. Low tides around about two, so that's in a few hours time. Um, and wind speed's down about five kilometers an hour at the moment, which is, which is pretty good. So yeah, hopefully there'll be a bit of sun later on today too. So make for nicer, nicer paddling conditions. We're at Talmine Bay and just about to do a paddle over to the Rabbit Islands. So I've been waiting, looking, watching the water, waiting for the tide to go out and the sun to come out. <laughs> but that's um, not going to happen quite yet. Um, probably around three the Savo, so another couple of hours away, but it's certainly brightening up. So hopefully this will be a really good paddle. This was quite a challenging paddle as there was quite a big swell, which was hard to capture on film, mostly because we were concentrating on paddling. The swell was pretty smooth, but we estimated there were a couple of almost two meters mid crossing. Fortunately, the return trip was a lot easier. just come out, it's uh, beaming down, it feels very nice now, so we're just starting to paddle back, um, there's quite a swell in the middle, maybe about one and a half metres, and over to our left there's a whole load of breakers where the swell coming around the Rabbit Island comes together and meets again, uh, so that's something to watch out for, and then that's where we're heading, just straight over that way. There's some of that swell again. Funny it didn't look 1.5 to 2 metres from the shore. Well, we made it nearly there it's uh, nice and peaceful and flat now just in the harbour some wee fishing boats over there I'm just gonna aim for the right hand side of the beach here where the waves are a lot less dumpy than what they are on the left 
As soon as we got back, the sun came out and the waves died down. Scotland is full of them. for paddling and has lots of sheltered coves and, and that famous crystal clear water. just uh, setting up a, a GoPro to take a few pictures and we come around the corner and there's this beautiful beach. on and we jumped in for the first time in Scottish waters um, and I can only say I'm glad that I did have it on because my hands were frozen in about two seconds even though you look around it's a stunning day you think it'll be Queensland and beach bathers but um, not with this water temperature. We're in Akmalvik Bay at the moment beautiful sunny day it's actually almost I would have said driving around was a bit too warm without air conditioning but yeah, the, the water is still pretty chilly, so glad we got our wetsuits. 
um, went in swimming with them for the first time just to test them out. They feel like they could be a little bit buoyant, which uh, is pretty cool. Maybe that's the technology of wetsuits these days. It's been a long time since I had one. Uh, but yeah, beautiful location. These two really lovely little bays, sandy bays in amongst the rocks here. And the water is crystal clear. Gorgeous. What do you think of that? Um, it's pretty good. The wind's picking up now, so I think we've chosen the right time to, to come out. Um, it's a beautiful evening, and we shall go and start packing up. Thanks for watching. If you'd love to keep the videos coming, you can support us by liking, subscribing, clicking notifications, and sharing with your paddleboarding mates. See you next week.